hat up there. Your hat, hun. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good week. Good, good rainy day. Let's open up in prayer. Let's open up in prayer. We'll get started. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for the privilege to come into your house, Father, and gather on a Wednesday. And, and uh, Lord, we just thank you for good fellowship, Father, and just good people. We, we can't wait to get here in the middle of the week to see all our friends. And, and Father, we just pray you'd bless our time together, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're going to be in page 40 of the Israel book. Hey, Margaret. Right. Page 40. We can either bring a chair around there, or you want me to bring a chair around? Do you mind getting it, Speedy, and take a chair around there? Make it easier. You sure? Okay. So, lesson three. I'm going to talk just for a couple minutes. It's going to be a short lesson, and then we've got a video that I think you'll enjoy watching. And online, I put the link to the video that we're going to be watching. There's a link in the description on the page. And so let's go ahead and start. Um, last week, we looked at the uh, covenant between God and the Jewish people. How the Jews became a people through the covenant. Remember, God made a covenant. He swore to himself that they would forever be his people. We saw that the Jews were set apart by God. We saw the different aspects of their identity. And today, uh, the chapter is a short chapter, so that's why I think it'd be good, uh, the video that I've got. But today is on the, uh, the land of Israel and the Jewish people's connection to the land of Israel. Uh, I thought this is interesting, this timeline in page 41. If you've got the book, or if you don't have a book, maybe you can share it with somebody. And I've got some more books ordered. This gives you the overview of the timeline of Israel. You know, we think of American history, we go back like 250 years, and oh, that's... Well, we're, we're talking 4,000 years for the, for the Jewish people, for, the, for Israel. 2166 BCE, the time of Abraham. BCE means before common era. That's the secular way of saying before Christ. Common era would be AD. We would say AD. BCE would be before Christ, before common era. 1916. B.C. is the time of Joseph. A few hundred years after that, Moses would lead the people out of uh, Egyptian bondage. 400 years they were in, in Egyptian bondage. 1406 is when Israel, after wandering around through the wilderness, in 1406 B.C. is when Israel entered the Promised Land. By the way, uh, we're, we're not going to go through the, the primers that they have at the end of the chapter, but at the end of the chapter from page 46 to 50, they give little history lessons on each of these Sweet. events. So it's really cool. It's really cool. And that even goes beyond uh, the 70 AD. Uh, let's see. 1040, time of David. 975 is when the monarchy divides. Do you know what that is? Do you remember that from our last study? Right, the split of the kingdoms, right? Jeroboam, he took up, he took off to the north. Uh, let's see, 961, the first temple. First temple is Solomon's temple. The grandest temple ever. 961 is when he finished the temple. 722, the Syrians' destruction of northern Israel. When the Assyrians came down and they, uh, they defeated and sent into exile the uh, northern ten tribes of Israel. 586, that's a key date in Israel's history. 
the Babylonians destroy the temple. They burn the temple led by Nebuchadnezzar to the ground. They go into Babylonian captivity. And so they're in captivity. Now, is that the July 18th? The, yes. Tish Ba'af, the ninth of Av. Yep. That's the, it, the, the, uh, the first temple was destroyed. The second temple was destroyed. Uh, what was some others? The start of the Holocaust. A lot of terrible events took place on that same date. Uh, okay, let's see. The second temple construction begins. That's Zechariah, Ezra. Uh, let's see. The Greeks. This is left out of a lot of history. Remember Alexander the Great? He, took a, he, uh, he conquered Israel in 330 BCE. 63, the Romans invade Israel. 37 B.C., that's when Herod the Great began ruling. 67 A.D., C.E., A.D. or C.E., that's when the Jews revolt. And three years later, Jerusalem would be conquered by the Romans. The second temple would be destroyed. And uh, that's when, uh, for almost 2,000 years, the Jews would be exiled from their land, pushed across the, across the waters. And then uh, we'll see um, 19, up until 1948, 2,000 years the Jews are exiled. But in 1948 is the establishment of the Jewish state. Uh, look at 42. A little review. Uh, we saw last week uh, how God promised the land of Canaan. Canaan, ancient Canaan is present day Israel. The land flowing with milk and honey. He promised the, the land to Abraham and his descendants as an everlasting possession. Uh, Israel is the only nation in the history of the world that was created by a sovereign act of God. Israel is the only nation in the world that has its borders recorded in Scripture. The borders are recorded in the scripture. Uh, most importantly, the Jewish people are the only people that have been given a specific piece of real estate as an eternal and everlasting possession through a blood covenant with God Almighty. Remember the covenant God made and he walked through the, he walked through the carcasses? Simply stated, God gave Israel the title deed to the land. Genesis 17, 7 and 8 says, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you. That's everyone else after you. For the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you, the whole land of Canaan where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you and I will be their God. So the Jewish connection of Israel goes back 4,000 years when Abraham left his, his homeland and he moved to Canaan, more specifically in Shechem. Uh, after, and we just saw a, a, a second ago after that, the exodus from Egypt, Joshua would, would take the children of Israel across the Jordan and they would possess the land. Uh, key aspects of Jewish law are directly related to Israel and can only be fulfilled by Jews living in the land. Parts of the law pertain to the land. Uh, for example, if Jews are in control of the land, they must observe certain agricultural practices. If they are not in control, then they follow another set of rules. See, this is the importance of the land. Exodus, uh, Deuteronomy, speaks of all those rigid laws, even on how you deal with the land. You're to work the land six years, but on the seventh year, you're to let, give the land a rest, just like a Sabbath. Uh, if they would till the land on that seventh year, well, God wouldn't bless it. But they, that would be the year of, of uh, Sabbath, rest for the land. Uh, they would also leave the corners of the land uh, for the sojourners uh, to help the poor. So they had to, they had to follow some strict practices. What's interesting is from, and you can see it in the primer in the back, you can see a picture from 70 AD to 1948, the land 
the land that was flowing with milk and honey, it was barren. It was a waste place. And you see pictures, you know, just, it was just, just, yeah, just sand. But in the early 1900s, a group of people, uh, is Israeli settlers, a couple families joined together, bought some barren land, and there's a picture. And, and it's present day Tel Aviv. And now the land is flourishing and just fertile and beautiful and lush because the people are back in the land. When the people were away from the land, it was a waste place. But now that they're in it, it's a blessed, it's a blessed place. Uh, they pray, the Jews even to this day, they pray towards Jerusalem. They face Jerusalem three times a day. I know when I was flying over there, at about three o'clock in the morning, I heard and I had to use a restroom. And I walked back and right in front of the restroom on the plane, all the Jews looking out the window, praying, praying towards Jerusalem. I and I couldn't get to the bathroom. I had to wait for their prayers. But it was towards, they were facing whatever east, west, wherever it was, looking out the window. And so that's that's the land. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The, the connection to the land of Israel is woven into the fabric of Jewish life. It's a foundational to how the Jewish people express not only their devotion to God, but their very identity as a people. Even after they were exiled, after AD 70, all those years, they still, even after they were expelled, most of the Jews from ancient Israel, the Jewish connection to Israel was maintained. They still had the connection. They still knew, even at the, as they were dispersed throughout the world, they knew the promise. They knew the promise. Diaspora is the word. Uh, maybe you've heard that before. Diaspora. It's the word that's used to describe the Jewish people after the Romans dispersed. So when you hear the, the phrase, the, the Jewish diaspora, that's when they were dispersed after uh, the Romans came in. It, the Hebrew word that describes the Jewish diaspora, galut, means exile from the land. There's a long Jewish tradition of believing that Jews who do not live in Israel live in an unnatural state because they are divorced from the land given to them by God. And that is absolutely true today. And that's why so many, even Americans, they're moving they might have been born in America, but they're moving to Israel because they don't feel complete. They feel separated from their land. They've got to get connected to the land. Um, there's even a, there was a ministry that, that came out where they were actually uh, raising funds for poor Jewish people spread all over Europe to fly the people back to Israel. It was about, about 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, page 45, the Jewish people, despite a 2,000-year exile from their homeland and history marked by violent attacks against them, maintained their connection to Israel. This longing would eventually inspire one of the most miraculous events of recent history, the establishment of a modern Jewish state in the land of Israel. 1948, history was made. Uh, and... Um, the Jews had their homeland restored. Many anti-Israel advocates claim that Jews only came to Israel after the Holocaust. Oh, that's not their land. They're, they came, they're, you know, like they're, they're coming in and stealing the land from the Palestinians. But there is extensive biblical, archaeological, historical, and anecdotal evidence to prove that there has been a continue, continuous presence of Jews in the land of Israel for close to 4,000 years. And so now I'm going to sign off online and we're going to watch a video on uh, the City of David by uh, Zev Ornstein, who is the director of the City of David. And I think you'll find it really interesting of some discoveries and it ties in to this lesson. And for those watching online, the link, we're going to watch it in here. The link is, you can see it in the description, okay? So everybody have a good night. God bless. Hope you enjoy watching the video.